The 2023 World Table Tennis Championships is in the history books, and we can look back at the reasons that made this tournament a complete failure. But before we begin, something needs to be clarified. All the criticism you will hear is directed at ITTF and World Table Tennis. The organizations that are responsible for these major events and the promotion of table tennis in general. It has nothing to do with the performances of players. In terms of the competitive part, it was a wonderful tournament. There were plenty of exciting matches to enjoy, surprises, upsets and thrilling seven-set showdowns. We saw it all. With that said, all the failures in the organization of this World Championships cannot be ignored. You won't see any highlights from this tournament in the background, not only because of the copyright. Just to see the ambiance and vibes of the past tournaments, to feel the difference. First of all, World Championships should be open to all countries. Every ITTF member should be allowed to send their best athletes to this tournament. Whether they decide to participate, it's up to every national association, but the opportunity must be there. The last Real World Championships was held in 2019, in Budapest. 609 players from 109 countries took part in this tournament. In 2021, this number fell to 265 players from 56 countries. In Durban, there were 306 players from 59 countries. Since the arrival of WTT, the World Championships has lost almost half of its participants. Up until 2019, the system was simple and great. Every country had a chance to participate, and lower-ranked players had an opportunity to enter the main draw via qualification rounds. Why don't keep it that way? It wouldn't bother the leading players anyway. Two extra days of qualifying rounds would not harm anyone. In Durban, everything felt rushed. As only the top players matter. It's understandable in football, where you have 200 national teams, and World Cup is an ultimate dream. Table tennis is not that popular, to limit the opportunities for players from countries, where table tennis isn't held in high regard. Imagine this from a perspective of a young player. If he's a German, Swede, or French, there is a clear path to success. The professional environment around, allows growth and earning that World Championships experience. But what should do the players from countries, where there is no professional table tennis system? Most are now forced to become lone warriors. It's a road with a dead end. The entry system needs a reset. The next obvious thing, was the lack of spectators. Let's be honest, Durban and South Africa, was a poor choice to host World Championships. The logic is understandable. ITTF and WTT probably wanted to expand the audience, but it failed miserably. The atmosphere was close to non-existent. You could hear players and coaches cheer louder than the fans in the arena, if there were any. For such a major event, it's embarrassing. It felt like one of the WTT feeder events, rather than the World Championships. Some will disagree with this, but such events should be organized in countries where table tennis is valued. There are so many options. China, Japan, Korea, and some other Asian countries would fill the arena without any problems. The same can be said about many European countries. Why not value people who genuinely are interested in table tennis? You cannot forcibly make people follow a particular sport. It's very unlikely that table tennis will see a sudden rise in popularity in South Africa because of this tournament. It takes way more than one major event to turn things around. The streaming of this tournament was also poorly executed. The lighting was terrible. The image was too dark, and when a player was wearing a dark shirt, it made the picture even worse. With this eternal darkness, it looked like WTT tried to hide the fact that there are almost no spectators in the Tribune. There were also several cases when matches had to be stopped due to problems with electricity. And of course, let's not forget Table 1 and all the buzz around it. Where to watch it? Spectators from some countries were lucky to see it on YouTube while others had to use VPN or wait for WTT to publish the highlights. Once again, quick cash in proved to be more important than presenting fans with the best broadcasting experience possible. 
And finally, the rankings and value of world championships. It's a complete disgrace that the most important tournament in table tennis has the same value as the top WTT events. The winner of the World Championships and Singapore Smash gets the same amount of ranking points, 2,000 points. The World Champions title is 10 times more important and historic than any Pro Tour win. The ranking points for this achievement should match its importance. But again, we are talking about the people who organized the worst World Championships ever. Seems naive to expect something good from them. The saddest part about this all is the silence of influential figures in table tennis, such as Adam Bobro. He has a huge popularity among the table tennis fans. His voice could have a positive impact. It would be hard for ITTF and WTT to ignore criticism from someone who has a large audience and plenty of insights as well. However, it seems that he has lost the status of the actual voice of table tennis. Now Bobro is just a paid voice of WTT. They can organize tournaments as carelessly as possible, but nobody seems bothered about it. Everything is fine, as long as those paychecks are coming. The ITTF made a huge mistake by giving all the power to WTT. Since its creation, table tennis has gained nothing. There are plenty of things to criticize about the WTT Pro Tour system, but that is a topic for another video. What are your thoughts about this World Championships? Was it the worst ever or WTT actually does a good job and such criticism is unfair? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you next time.